Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. Welcome this week's episode of the podcast. Hope you're having a great week, and I appreciate y'all being here, man. I really do. This is the last episode for a while. I uh, just got accepted to a house in Denver like two days ago, so I'm going to be moving out there in about two weeks. And so it's going to be about a month probably for the show's back up and running, but I got a lot of room to do a lot of really cool shit for this podcast. So I got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of different ideas I'm going to try out. Um, also got a lot of really dope face-to-face -face guests lined up, so really, really excited about that. So really appreciate y'all being here for this and can't wait to y'all for y'all to see what's to come. But my guest today is an absolute savage, one of the be best producers out there. I'm not even going to even say in electronic music. This guy knows production better than most, and it's insane the amount of knowledge this guy has, the amount of skill and technique this dude has. He's currently on tour with Chom, and I'm very happy I got to be able to sit down with this guy um, and just kind of poke at his brain, dude, because he kind of takes production to the next fucking level if you're a production nerd you're gonna like this shit if you're not hell you get to see the inside of an absolute nerd and i say that um in the best way possible but ladies and gentlemen au5 Got you. With that hairdo, I could see you being a hockey guy. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, because you get the ears pierced, the hair, especially with the beanie. Like you're prepared for it to be cold, you know, already. Uh, yeah, I, I was, I was thinking like, like I, I see what you mean, but I'm like, why is there that association? But that makes sense. Yeah. Cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're ready to fucking rock it. Mm. I haven't been to a hockey game, but the motherfuckers be fighting. Dude, it's shit scary. Teeth, teeth flying. Yeah, that's awesome. That gets me hyped. Do you, <laughs> you ever fucked like watch UFC or anything like that? Um. I've come across it, yeah. yeah. I don't. It's 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 intense. I don't really like anything that's that's too. I don't like anything that's violent. Got you, got you. Except so like music, you know, nature. Oh yeah, depth set's pretty violent. Yeah, yeah. But you don't make so much violent stuff, dude. Your stuff. I mean, you have some, but like your stuff is just very beautiful at times. Like you, you, right. you, you're an absolute savage in the studio. <laughs> I mean, my my whole thing is like trying to stretch the polarity or stretch the you know the extremes yeah you know as 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 chill and beautiful and 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 pretty as it can get i want to see how far i can complement that while it's like whilst keeping it a cohesive and a coherent uh like work like a song like something really dirty and heavy and nasty mixed with something beautiful and pretty and and delicate like i just love exp i don't know i just love stretching that you know what i mean yeah well before we get too big and too deep into the the music because i just started okay, recording yeah, yeah. and we we're gonna get there i just want to say welcome brother awesome thank you for being here thanks so much okay man. cheers Appreciate dude it. let's uh let's 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 crack open these cold skis and uh cheers buddy how you doing today i'm doing good i'm a little sleep deprived that happens when you're on tour mm -hmm. yeah i'm just getting in the flow of that whole thing all fly dates huh What'd you say? It's all fly dates for you and Chom's tour? Yeah, yeah. So, well, with uh, last week, so we played four shows in a row. And we played um, D.C., Virginia Beach, Greenville, and Charlotte. Routed. And uh, the, the last two shows, Charlotte and, um, and Greenville, we, we got an Uber. Um, and uh, that was super chill. Like, okay, that is way better than a flight because for some reason, airplane seats are just not they're just made to like disintegrate your spine so yeah that was uh that was really helpful what gives you more back problems dude djing leaning over to the table or the or the uh flight seats shit man i mean the combination of both is just like is just a killer yeah um i wonder that myself imagine actually. if you played hockey on top of that dude oh you'd be God. fucked <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. No. <laughs> so uh, turn. So I. I. So I have minor scoliosis actually, and that's been exacerbated by just you know touring and flights and 
I'm very active and I used to headbang a lot more on stage and shit. And that's like, that definitely did some damage. And so over the past uh, several months, I've been seeing a chiropractor and they've been doing like specific things and like neck traction and basically slowly straightening everything out and i should have been doing that like many years ago but dude so i've heard scoliosis that term i don't exactly know what it is yeah so it's basically like um when your spine is like curved like from side to side mm. so like no, we call those curves daddy you know what i'm saying you just got them curves <laughs> you know bone curves All oh right. damn bro that's what i look for damn all right i want to know if that spine's got a fucking donk you know what i mean <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know about, like, what you're experiencing on the, on the outside. <laughs> that can be a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just my issues in my head, you know? But, yeah, I'm a little creaky. Damn. So. And so, like, what does a chiropractor have to do? Just straighten you out? So, they pretty much make sure that the, the vertebrae is actually, like, each, each vertebrae or each vertebra is, like, is able to move and not, like, getting stuck. And what that does, that just helps, like flexibility and um just range of motion which in turn is like basically leaves space for your nerves to function or basically leaves space for your nerves so you don't have any like pressure on your nerves which causes a whole bunch of other issues in the body but for my for my in my case specifically um it's uh yeah it's a combination of just like getting everything kind of loose and then uh, i go on this traction machine where like they they like grip my neck and then they work up over the weeks um, to like 40 pounds of traction. Basically, like it's pu they're, it's pulling my head apart from my body with 40 pounds of force for like 20 minutes. Are you into that? Like, is it is it <laughs> is it kind of hot? I mean, I'm, it sounds kind of hot. I am. Uh, it's. <laughs> It does something. It really does something. <laughs> it does something. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but then um, when I'm done, it's like, it's really some endorphins. So damn, yeah. So you leave it feeling like a little high or something. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. crazy. I feel a little bit taller. Oh um, wow, damn. I want to. I, I need to be a little taller, man. Everyone's always picking on me. My friends be talking shit because they're all like six something. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I'm, I've always kind of been a short kid in yeah. school. Will it make you taller? I mean, probably by like a millimeter. Or oh, two. okay, that's not enough. But but as you, I mean, what, we're adult, we're grown adults now. Mm -hmm. We're not getting any taller just naturally. If anything, we're getting shorter, and that's a very real thing. Um, Fuck, man. So, I I would assume the spinal decompression would prevent you from shrinking, because. Damn. The discs in your vertebrae get shorter and you, shorter. You think, like, your back problems is just you getting older, dude? Wait, wait what do you mean? Like, like, like you didn't have... Do you always have scoliosis? Or is it you think that's just a common... Are you just getting older? I think it's a combination of... I'm, I think I was predisposed to that, and I think it's also just, like, getting older and gravity. Yeah. Um. I mean, <clears throat> growing up, um, like, when I was 13, I, I, I picked up the... Uh, the bass guitar and that was a huge thing and i was like i was probably like like 80 pounds if that and like oh. i don't know it's four foot something and uh, this thing was like almost my size and and weight <laughs> that's what it felt like um and yeah just like having the strap on on my shoulder and i you know i play a lot and i i play in bands and also um took lessons all the time and so just that constant weight on this shoulder um, I think that was the main thing that was responsible for like the, my spine curvature because like looking at the x-ray, it looks exactly like it's curving. It just looks like everything is getting pushed this way. Yeah. So I, I think that was probably the, 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 the killer and then just growing into that, not treating that. Um, and now it's kind of like solidified. Yeah, dude, I think I'm gonna get arthritis in my wrist. <clears throat> I'm a drummer. Oh shit! And you know, I get some just some wrist pains every now and then. I'm drumming, jerking it, whatever, dude. But uh, no, nah, dude. So my buddy, he just turned 
uh, 34 yesterday, mm. right? He pulled his back from picking up his bong. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, what? Like, <laughs> talk about getting old, dude. Like, you, don't tell nobody that. Make up a story. You know what I mean? <laughs> I pulled my back out from fucking, like, you know, something, yeah, yeah. you know. But he's like, I picked up my bong and pulled a muscle in my back. I'm like, dude, don't ever tell anybody that. But how big is his bong? Though? It's a big bong, but not big enough to. This bong would not pull my back. It wouldn't pull anybody's back. The fact that it happened on his 34th birthday just was like, that, that doesn't make the, you feel old. The day he turned 34. Yeah. <laughs> That's very unfortunate. It sucks, man. That sucks, dude. But uh, yeah, dude. So I do want to, uh, how's this tour going so far? I mean, we're only five days in out of like 20 something. And so far it's going great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a blast. Do you I'm and John have much of a relationship prior to this? Um, I mean, we've, we hung out like, we hung out like twice, I think, before, and we made a song together a couple years ago, uh, called Void Walkers, and that was gonna lead into the, our tour, which got, you know, postponed for two years, yeah. and is now the new tour, but, um, yeah, I mean, so he lives, he lives in the UK, and so it's like, actually hanging out in person is a, is a rarity, um, and I mean, yeah, pretty much the majority of our relationship has really just been like occasionally just chatting online and talking about music stuff. But um, yeah, now we're actually like chilling in person on the reg and just having a blast. And super cool, dude. Super cool, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, how funny it would have been if he's like, no, dude, he fucking sucks. Like <laughs> you just start talking shit. I'm like, oh damn, dude, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I can. No, no. He's yeah, good. right. No. I'm excited to meet him tonight. I haven't met him yet. I yeah. don't ever even talk to the guy, so I'm excited I'm gonna meet him tonight. He's chill. I'd say um, having a British accent definitely like is like 15 to 20 percent cooler. Though. Dude, for sure. <laughs> For sure, dude. But then you're the ugly one in the group. You know what I mean? Because he's got the cool accent. You're like, fuck. Yep. I'm American. <laughs> Goddamn right. Never forget that. I'll have a burger. <laughs> yeah, and a beer. But they have that. You know, they have both of those things. But yeah, they, don't, they don't say them quite like that. Though. Uh, but, well, I have, dude, dude, give me your best accent, dude. Let me do it. Let me hear it. Dude, you, hear, you've been around them for a couple days. All right, let's let's hear it. I actually haven't. So, Fuck. <laughs> Oh man, what does he say? Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I really don't. I feel like your accent is almost like, is almost like influential in the opposite direction. Yeah. Like oh it's, yeah. It's harder for me to hear the British accent because you're like, around someone with the Southern accent. Yeah, it's like the opposite. Let me hear oh. your Southern accent. You got one? All right, tell me, say something. Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all. Boom. Boom. There you go. There you go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, do you gotta put emphasis on it? Hell yeah. Hell. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I love I love this dude. This is great. Oh man, dude. So I learned something uh from our agent yesterday. I was talking with Alex mm. and uh he was saying you're a fucking savage on a piano. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I used to be. Used to right. be. When I was like probably when I was like thirteen. Yeah, you're a little bit of a musical prodigy. Like you play all the instruments, huh? Um, I dabble, yeah, yeah. Um, my main things, I mean, I still play keyboard, I still fuck around with that, um, but, uh, bass guitar, and then I dabble with, you know, the six string too, but I'm not as good with the fingers on the little strings. I need those, you know. Those meaty ones over there. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, I just, I just got a bass, uh... Uh, I got it like a year ago, maybe. It's actually when Conrink was over here. We were going to uh, Guitar Center, and he, because he just always wants to go to Guitar Center. I'm like, dude, we don't need to go. And I'm like, why? And I'm like, because if we go, I'm gonna fucking buy mm -hmm. something. And I've been wanting to get a bass because I was always, you know, I was record, I was making a bunch of like songs and using like uh just VST bass guitar plugins, and yeah. I was like, this would sound so much better with a real bass. Right, right. Yeah, and then that. and then I got it, and I'm like, wow, that sounds so much better with a real bass. Yeah. Do you play? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've cool. been a drummer since I was nine. I played guitar for like a while, probably like five years, and yep. then like I picked up the bass. Nice. Yeah, nice. I can't shred by any means, but if you're like, all right, we're gonna play G minor, let's go. I'm like, all right, let's go. Cool. We're gonna play in the key of G minor. I'm like, all right, let's run it. So I feel that. You know. Yeah, same here. I mean, it's like I used to be into skateboarding, and it's like everyone's doing these crazy fucking flips and tricks and stuff. I'm just like, dude, I'm just trying to ride. I'm yeah, just you're trying, trying to stay in the it. pocket, dude. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing. It's like with with the instrument. It's like I'm very comfortable just like in this pocket. Yeah. You know, that's why I like being a drummer, shred. dude, because then I can fucking I can get out that pocket real quick mm -hmm. on you. But it, yeah, dude, Alex was saying you could fucking shred on the piano, man. 
I don't know how, where he heard that. I okay. think he just assumed. He just, he just, he's just a liar. <laughs> he's, you know. Well, it's funny. The first time I met him, like back in 2014 at the the Warpath office, like he was like, I heard that you, uh, like, like you shred on the guitar, don't you? And he brought out the guitar. Oh, and he gets like, stoked on. And if you take, bring up anything with the guitar, his, his you'll just see the fire lit up in his <laughs> eye, dude. I mean, he he shreds. Yeah, he's fucking great. He is. And he hands me this acoustic guitar and which is like even like more difficult and i'm just like dude like my, my instruments my instrument is is bass i can fuck around on the guitar but like you're gonna be very disappointed if you think that i if i shred on the guitar so yeah i was like here how about you you just and i just enjoyed him shredding yeah i enjoy it when he shreds too but no dude you're a fucking I put you like in that category of pretty like you shred in the studio, dude. Like you can run circles around fucking anybody. And I know that's not what you're trying to do, but I'm just saying that. Like mm. I put you like in that same category with like Mr. Bill, Ill Gates, when it just mm. comes to like that nerd level of production where you just have that uh, another way of looking at it or you have all this knowledge and shit, dude. Right. So you've been how long you been doing this for? Shit. So it's it's kind of been in stages. <clears throat> I first started making music on the computer. Like Let's just start from like, okay, computer music, uh, age nine. And I've been, I was messing around with uh, this obsolete program called Easy Beat, and it was a MIDI sequencer. It was like, you couldn't really do anything with audio. I mean, yeah, you couldn't do anything with audio. You couldn't, there was like no synthesizers. It was just like, you know, the stock MIDI sound font kind of sounds. Um, and so I, I got accustomed to using the piano roll, like writing stuff in the piano roll. Um, through that software and uh you know before that i was playing piano and already interested in kind of like writing my own music and hearing melodies in my head all the time because so, i've i've i have uh, been playing piano since i was four yeah. classically trained um and so i'm just constantly hearing like music in my head and so it just seemed to be the, the next logical step is to like okay if i could somehow record this or like put it down transcribe it then i am satisfied then then i'd say when i was 13 in seventh grade that's when the whole like dance music thing like i really became in like really into dance music um and so i got garage band and i started making like you know trance kind of beats uh, in garage band and then um i I convinced my parents to buy me Logic the next year, and they bought me Logic, and then the rest was kind of history. So, since you were nine, since I was nine, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'd imagine to be an absolute animal doing it for that long, dude. But like, yeah, like I watch your videos, or just like you know your content's even like geared towards like the producer. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, here's how you do this. Here's a little trick for you and stuff. And every time I'm, I'm, I'm always like, hey, fucking a, like <laughs> thanks for that tip, brother. You know what I mean? But nice. yeah. Yeah, so you being doing this for so long, like, what's a normal day in the studio for you? Like, because, like I said, you are like I say nerd in this sense. It's not like a derogatory term. It's like, and, the, and like I'm a fucking nerd with it too. But like, you're like on that highest level with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like, you have to be. You know what I mean? But like, you just do it on a whole other level. Like, how how do you get so deep into it, man? You just get bored, like just writing, like you know, just your typical basis. You're like, how can I route this differently? Or like, man, that's a really good question. And I think a lot of it has to do with. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Like earlier on in my life, that kind of culminated into this, this this kind of workflow that I have. <clears throat> so, if I'm gonna be honest, um, so I. Uh, was very much I, I did not like school growing up i went to a private school and they battered me with homework for so long you just don't do it dude that's what i mean i went to public school i just didn't do it i wish it was that easy <laughs> that's what i would have done if i if there weren't consequences like yeah, she I was, did your homework i'm like the fuck are you talking about we had homework it was the whole thing but anyway um my way of kind of like decompressing from that was like or like you know getting away from that escaping from that was making music on the computer. And it was like, okay, video games kind of on the computer. I never like had any consoles or anything, but like making music was always way more gratifying because it was always something I, I felt excited to come back to. Um, so like, okay, I'll try to start my homework and I'm like, uh, I, not right now, I have, an, I have an idea in my head. Like, I'm just gonna put this aside. I need to like work on it and then make, write in a melody and, uh, 
and then lose track of time and then like all right all right i gotta do homework and then like that that itch is still there of like okay there's a song that's in progress that i have in my head and can't get it out of your head can't get out of my head can't go to sleep that night right right and so that kind of escapist habit eventually became a beneficial and very practical habit um being a music producer because like it, the same kind of I, I get the same kind of feeling get the same kind of rush particularly when i'm on like um when there is like a, a a loose deadline i think that's when i really thrive the most because i can't overthink it's like the first thing that comes to mind it's like okay how can i as quick as possible get what's in my head out and then usually when once that happens i just get into a flow and i'm like it's just idea after idea after idea um i think the hardest part really is to is like and for most people getting into that flow because like if you're not feeling good emotionally and you're just kind of going through the motions trying to find something new or if you're like comparing yourself to like other stuff you've done before or other stuff that your peers are doing or i mean something that's really that's been really tough for me this pa- this whole past year is like like the whole pandemic happened i released 20 songs or i think in 2020 and then 2021 comes around and i'm like i got nothing i like emptied my slate i have a blank slate now and uh everyone else you know no one's touring everyone's just killing it in the studio and it's all over social media and that's just a lot of pressure i'm just like i don't feel like i can live up to that expectation i don't think i can live up to to that and just like that anxiety kind of just discouraged me from from like wanting to 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 make music for like on, on the reg um i would dabble here and there but mainly all i was doing was like sound design and like really honing in on like the the techniques for like tutorials and stuff which is i guess another outlet but um more recently yeah i've i've found myself like really like falling in love with just like writing just whatever again like not judging it and then it just turns into something that's uh that's 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 fun and exciting i think the main thing is like like i think everyone is uniquely creative and you don't have to try in order to make something that is is unique even if it's like you're copying someone like it's going to be in your own way have your own flavor yeah and the less that you concern yourself about it being a copy or less you concern yourself about you lacking creatively in some way the more creative you know you're going to have more creative bandwidth and it's going to be a more of an enjoyable process yeah so that's that's all i'm looking for you know i'm i'm it's a it's a felt thing you know it's like when you feel it like the ideas come and it's just euphoric yeah it's addictive it's super addictive dude i'll have trouble like if i start an idea i can't sleep yeah you know what i mean i can't sleep there was a couple things i wanted to bring up uh, some as when all the things you just said there's two things actually first thing was the is the pressure man Mm -hmm. the you know just seeing everybody online and I mean, I, 2020, it was the most music I'd ever released in a year, too. I was just fucking... But mm-hmm. I was in here every single day, so I was able to keep stocking. But, mm-hmm. yeah, man, that fucking pressure can stop you from being creative, can stop you from, man, really wanting to try. I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do that and shit. But I right. think once once I stop giving a fuck, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. I don't, what, that's cool. They're doing that. Go them. Yeah. But it's not affecting me. And the, the second you stop letting that affect you, the second you stop giving a fuck, mm-hmm. that's whenever you're able to be yourself, and that's when you're making your best shit. That's yeah, yeah. yeah that's when you're making best shit when when you're not concerned about how you're leveling with anybody else, because it's like ultimately we're our perceptions of ourselves is very, I'd say, very um, like critical and very limited to. It's super subjective, and that's music, and mm-hmm. that's just how it is. So it's like, don't even waste energy trying to object like objectively determine if you are better or if someone else is better or more skilled like fuck all that dude just like in remember when you first started making music I, i'm not i don't know if this is the case for for everybody but for, in my experience there was no music scene i didn't know anyone else that was making music and i didn't there was no competition or anything it was just like i have stuff i hear in my head that i want to make and it's fun it's like we can all channel that again. Like yeah. it's all there. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I, I got into music because it was fun. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? It was just fun. I was an energetic ass kid, just energetic as hell. I wanted to beat on things, so mom yeah. got me a drum kit. 
Perfect. And it was like part. It was perfect for me. You know what I mean? It was just fun, and mm-hmm. you know, jamming with friends. You're not thinking about what all these other bands are doing. You're like, dude, let's fucking get together after school and let's just jam. Let's write a tune. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh wow, we're playing a show. Holy fuck, dude, that's awesome. You and know that, that kind of shit. Like the success is just a byproduct of you allowing that creative flow to happen yeah and no and that's something that like i noticed like once i stopped giving a fuck and was just being myself and just nothing else that anybody else is doing it's affecting me like i'm in charge of what i'm doing no one else is gonna fucking dictate about you know while my career is doing certain things it's like it's all on me mm-hmm. the second i stopped giving a fuck and just being me and just like this is who i am like it or don't it's when shit started working yeah. you know what i mean that's just that's how it works yeah it's like it's it's almost like um it's a uh, it's a little supernatural sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like when you just like disengage, every it kind of allows the universe relaxes enough to allow the pieces to fall into place. Yeah, so to speak. Now I I can't write when I'm stressed either. It sounded like you can't do it either. Like when I'm stressed, like I might just need to go fishing or like you know rub a couple out. Like you know like I gotta just chill. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like. Um, but I know some people who. But like you even said, you like you like having that deadline. Which is a little bit of like self pressure. I I did I did my gave myself a deadline for going into the year. I was writing a comedy record last year, and I was like, I want it done by by December thirty first. No, yeah. no, no, not even the comedy record, the next record. But I was just like, I want to have it done by December thirty first, and like that was internal pressure. It wasn't pressure from anybody else out there, yeah. so it worked. Nice. But uh, now I know some people who are like fucking who stressed as hell, and like that's what they need. And I'm like you, wow, boy, you, wow. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, I mean, I think I think stress is for sure. Like, stress is addictive, and some people are very, very addicted to it. And they think I think that they think that it's like that is the only way for them to to like get anything done because that's what they're used to but man that's not good for you that's not good for your body it's like you're you're gonna get adrenal fatigue and then you're gonna experience health problems and then you're gonna pull your back out lifting up your bong yep (laughs) exactly (laughs) age 34 it's not necessary It's (laughs) it's not the best way to start your birthday you know but i mean i'm guilty of it too like stress is a has been a huge motivator like throughout my life like to succeed and i mean you know i'm an only child uh and i went to a private school with a very very small like class of like i very small and very like competitive but like on the down low so i've always felt that pressure to like okay be the best and exceed and excel and um and that's very much a part of my personality now which is like you know the older i get is like okay that has helped me tremendously in being able to really focus on something and and kill it and like be really good at that and not be distracted but um I'm also trying to just like live a normal life too. Yeah. And I feel like the older that I'm getting, I realize like there's a whole lot of other stuff. Like I feel like I'm a kind of like socially speaking, uh, a late bloomer. Like I did not really get a lot of diverse socialization when I was a, when I was a kid. So I still feel like I'm in high school just trying to figure shit out yeah. a lot of the time. And uh, it's, it's, it's tough to just like, you know, relax and also like be considerate of other people and in particularly in environments where there is like pressure or where there is stress, uh, that self-preserving and, and like achievement, uh, tendency is a very real thing. And, and, uh, it's something that I'm trying to like accept or rather understand more so I can kind of you know, I just want to be a better person. I want to be a more well-rounded person. Well, I just I don't know if that's stress on you. I think that's more expectations for yourself, right? Like yeah. you have high expect. I mean, I know I have high expectations for myself, and that's good. Like you, I feel like those expectations are leads to motivation, leads to a good worth ethic and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you that's know, what it's it, not, yeah. it for sure does. But yeah, but then it's you know two sides of the two sides of the same coin. It's like on one end, it is it's great to have that structure and kind of like a part of me, you know, inherently it's like, I, I strive to, 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 you know, be good at what I do and what what I like, but also, yeah, it's, I get tunnel vision. But isn't it cool having something you give a fuck about? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's the best thing. It is. And that, and that, and that, and that you're, you're like recognized for. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, really something yeah you're like hey actually i'm being in the studio today because i fucking love i want to be in here you know it's fun exactly i love that but the other thing you brought up and i wanted to to touch on it too 
is uh, you said something about like uh, when you're kind of comparing your homework and studio time, you're like, oh, I got the studio time, but I have this song I'm trying to finish up. I experienced that. I mean, I don't, I don't have homework, you know, I'm, I'm not in school. I'm an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I mean... I have nightmares that I'm in school. Like <laughs> my nightmares, yeah. I have a class that I didn't study for. I didn't do the homework, or I have a flight and I forgot my flash drives. Those are my fucking nightmares, oh, right? But I anyway, yeah, those are. I wake up and sweat. It's like fucking and study. But uh, you know, I'll do that too. Like I'll skip out like on a lot of. Um, like I've had trouble keeping like relationships or like certain uh, friendships with certain people because I'm like oh, I can't I'm blowing that off because I have this thing that I'm excited for I'm dealing with and I know you actually you, you were telling me earlier you have a girlfriend and stuff dude like how are you able to like cut it off for that like that's something I've always struggled with like yeah, I, yeah. like she, she got home from work all right I, I'm working still like that that's right, something right. that I I I, I I know I'm not the best at, but I'm also, that's why I'm single and it's chill. Like, I don't have to, you know, worry about it. But, like, Mm -hmm. how are you able to balance that? Because that is a balance, man. Like, I see, you know, I, I, uh, you know, like, it's something that I look at other people have and I'm like, that's awesome. They can make that work and stuff like that. But how you balance it? I mean, I feel like I barely do. Honestly, it's like sometimes I'm, I don't know, man. Like, (laughs) it's, it's, it's very difficult. And I, I look at, like I feel very similarly to you. I look at other people and I'm just like, yeah, they they got this shit together. They they balance that, and it's like, it's like, uh, it's compliment, very complementary and very synergistic in their in their life. Um, and man, I mean, you know, I'm just I'm just working through it. Yeah, day by day, figuring That's it out as you go. Exactly. Yeah, I feel that, man. I feel, I'm, aren't we all, dude? Uh, but dude, what else do you like to do outside of music? I know you said you're like a little bit of a late bloomer socially and stuff like that. Like, so like, are you a pretty introverted guy? Um, introverted in the sense of like, I don't like to like being around too many people for too long is very draining and disorienting. Um, so in, in that sense, I'd, I'd consider myself, uh, introverted, but you know, small, short doses of like intense socialization, like I get from playing shows is like, like I really thrive in that. I really like that. I think that's a good compliment. But, um, as far as like what I do outside of music, I mean, I almost never leave the house. Like I don't even have my own car. Um, Damn. Yeah. You know, I got a car out there in, in Denver. Nah, nah, well, not under my name. Gotcha. I mean, my girlfriend has a has a car, and I occasionally use that. But like, it's it's not my car. Yeah, it's a simple life, though. You know what I mean? I didn't have yeah. a car for two months uh, during the pandemic because it got total, and I just rode my bike everywhere. I was <laughs> You're like, just this like is, fuck it. Do you know it was, it's actually super enjoyable, dude? It's, I mean, riding a bike, getting out like actually in the outdoors and being physically active i mean that sounds awesome that's yeah. like that's kind of a blessing in disguise i would think well it's just like this time of year where it like felt amazing outside so like it didn't it wasn't like humid as the fuck and hot as hell so yeah. i could just ride my bike and it just be an enjoyable day so it was actually pretty sick but yeah. then i got the car and i'm like okay yeah, this is this is this is nice <laughs> right <laughs> this is nice so the comfort of of uh yeah technology yeah but um <laughs> i i had a bike actually and i i was riding around a little bit um and I just need the tire to be replaced because it's just, I fill it up and it gets flat. And so, but I've just been like, eh, I don't have time for that. And that's, it's been like six months. <laughs> so <laughs> it's something that I want to, it's something that I would like to do um, more often. Cause like we just recently, we just moved like back in December and um, in, in our old place, there was like a, there was like a huge like trail that went all the way to, to, to Denver. It connected, it connects like Denver and Boulder. And so we were we were riding, uh, we were doing bike, a lot of bike rides uh, through there, and that was fucking awesome. Um, I would like to do that again, but I mean now, I mean everything that I do is pretty much is pretty much just like indoors and mostly just in my studio. Yeah, and it's mostly just music related shit. Do you not go fucking insane though? So like comedy's my hobby, right? Mm. Like like I'll go do stand up during the weekdays and that's my hobby. Like it gets me away. It, it flexes other creative muscles. And if I kill it doing that, I go into the studio the next day with like confidence. I'm like, yeah, I'm on top of the world. Like is there like a hobby for you cuz music starts out as a hobby and then it turns into a career. Then it's like right. something you got to stay on top of. It's like you you don't have an escape or anything like that. I mean, not 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 that separate from 
not nearly as separate as like what you're well, like what you do um i mean i i make visual art as well word uh, that's something that when i am not feeling musically creative or like i can't really i'm just the tank is empty musically um visually that's that's where i usually like get ideas and it's that has its own like complementary dynamic it's yeah, like flexes okay. that different muscle mm -hmm. yeah for like for like a week or two i'll just be really going in on like graphic design and like 3d stuff and animations and and uh you know making visuals for my show everything kind of like converges back to the you know the the singular project yeah you know? and that gives me a sense of purpose uh also but then yeah once i'm done that and then it's like okay cool now i'm inspired to do this other stuff um and lately i mean over the past year or so on and off i've, I've been um i've been journaling a lot just like just free writing just like and it could it it's based off of stuff that like i'm let's just like shit emotional shit that i need to get moving i guess like this is kind of my way of like getting that internal gunk like like out is just like all right, I'm just going to, without judgment, just, like, write everything that's on my mind until I don't feel like there's that, like, angst or that, like, you know, I don't feel stuck anymore. Um, and doing that's been actually really revealing and also um, has inspired, like, a lot of cool, like, new ideas. And it's kind of like making stuff that's unconscious. It's like rising the unconscious stuff more to the surface. And I feel like it's really helped me... Um, like understand myself and also understand like what it is I'm trying to express musically and what my purpose is. Cause that's another thing. Like I feel like I have an identity crisis like every month. It's like, what am I like? What is the one, what is my one thing? You know what I mean? Like, what is my one thing that I should be doing? It's like, okay, there are times where it's like, okay, making crazy music for kids to enjoy. Other times it's, I reframe it and it's like, okay, I think my one thing is like, to just inspire people and that's that's very it's very much a like a fundamental component to 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 my my motivation but then other times i'm like the whole artist persona and me as a person are too intertwined like me identifying too much as an artist and it, i don't i just don't really i don't think have a healthy sense of like myself separate uh from being an artist if that makes sense you have trouble separating it is what you're saying yeah oh, and also yeah. seeing seeing myself as as a person just a i'm just a person just like everybody else is yeah seeing myself as just a person without the you know artist component obviously i am i am artistic and it's in in my life but like i i tend to over identify with being an artist a lot and uh it's kind of alienating sometimes too. Dude, no, I definitely can relate to that, man. I have a lot of time separating it, everything because it's like every thought I have, it's like all about taboo. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, what, yeah it's like what thinking about the next thing or this past song or something, I, a tweet I said, like whatever it is, it's like everything is revolved around it. So yeah, I have Tom's trouble separating it as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where friends come in, bro. You're right. That's where friends come in for no, sure. You're, you're totally right. And that's something I'd say that I've been doing more lately is like figuring out like, okay, who is my actual like, like tight friend group? Like yeah. who are the people that if I was not an artist and if they're, cause pretty much everybody that I know now is, I, I know through some musical endeavor. Yep. And that's, that's just how it is. They're all homies, but like, are they friends? You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm really only I keep in touch with only one person from high school, and, and that's it. And he's also a part of the music scene now too. But um, yeah, I think having that kind of like that home base with like you know just several tight knit homies is really important. And that's kind of what I'm I'm valuing that a lot more these days. And I'm starting to really see who they are. You know. Yeah. No, I definitely love that, man. Because like I, like I said, the thing that kind of helps me separate the two is just friends. Not even like I, I, I have a good bit of friends from back home that I still talk to on the regular and stuff. But I've even made some friends through the scene, 
like that are become like my best friends on the planet, like Comus. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's fucking mm-hmm. incredible. You should check him out. But he's like one of my best friends on the planet. Like, and we met through music. But it's like, dude, if I had to take a bullet for this guy, no question. Right, it's right. like, you know, that's that's one of the beauty in the music industry. I've met some people in this scene that I would fucking do anything for any time. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it transcends the whole career bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> for know, sure. It's it's, it's it's genuine. Dude, going to the journal, though, what's cool about the journal is because at that moment, you're just alone with your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Not like your thoughts, but like your internal things. You know what I mean? There's, you know, thoughts is a new, new term these days. But yeah, like it's just you're alone with your thoughts, dude. If you try fishing, dude, that's what that's what I go do. That's just like you're not doing shit, but just sitting there waiting and thinking. You know what I mean? Man. It's, it's therapeutic, man. I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine because it's like it's like focused nothingness yeah until there's something dude you literally that's my favorite thing about fishing is just i mean fishing is just fun and you get a tasty dinner that's always good but like you're outside but then whenever you're fishing you're not worried about your damn career the how's your song doing or the tour all you're worried about is catching that fucking fish you know (laughs) what i mean yeah yeah (laughs) it's the best man man the way i don't know why like like when when you said that it kind of just clicked for me i can i can see why that is such a therapeutic thing now yeah it's like it's 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 meditative it really is and especially if you go like with a buddy where it's like like i'll go with one of my best friends and do we won't even talk you know what i mean because we're fit but i'm just there with my buddy yeah we know each other's there so if he gets at something i get hyped it's the is it back you know yeah, back yeah. both ways i mean we'll sit there and talk but most of the time man we're just sitting there and just enjoying the company but just worrying about catching that fish dude that's see that kind of experience that dynamic i feel like doesn't really exist anywhere else particularly like in the music scene oh yeah it's so social and it's so i guess like not i want to say like non-present it's very much like like whereas fishing is is seems is very present it's like you're you're only focusing on what's in the moment like yeah. that's all there is there everything else is secondary if 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 not if if nothing right you know dude i'll and take you fishing whenever i move to denver do you want to go fishing with me man i got some poles be a good time dude i'm totally down i'd love to hell yeah dude take you some fishing you ever been fishing many many probably like over a decade well, ago. dude we'll go we'll have a good time we catch some fish we'll have some good dinner if not we still had a good time dude i'm so down yeah deal i've had some bad luck fishing lately though i ain't caught shit in a minute but <laughs> That didn't make the experience. That didn't ruin the experience, no, though, dude. It's still, it's, it's a good day. Fun. I'm outside. Yeah. It's a beautiful day, you know, just chilling. Yeah, yeah, meditating. Hell yeah. Well, dude, we got some uh, questions I wanted to get to. Um, one of them actually, I think you'll really uh, enjoy. Uh, let me turn this bitch up, though. My speakers got to turn back on. And shut up. Or audio. Message. Hey, AU five. <laughs> hey, AU five, and that taboo. Uh, it's your boy out here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, just posted. Um, got a question. So I took classes from AU5 on uh, Daw Nation to kind of help me with learning how to make music and everything like that. Um, big shout out and thank you to that, by the way. That helped a lot. So my question for y'all is how did you guys initially learn how to handle a Daw like Ableton or handle a, a DJ program or anything like that? Um, how did you guys get started and how did you learn more? Um, keep it up. Love what you guys do. Appreciate it. Appreciate you calling, man. We, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I, mm. I do want to talk about the teaching aspect. But if there's anything in that question you want to answer, I do want to talk about the teaching aspect, though. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I described how, like, I was, you know, do I, I kind of how I kind of started out when I was younger. Uh, but I think it still applies. Like, it, you don't need to be a child to to have that curiosity to, to, you know, learn something. And it, for me, it was pretty much entirely self-taught. And I think if you have that, like, if you f- have that, like, motivation and, and that fire to, to like, okay, I, I, I hear something in my head that I want to make and you don't know how to use a tool, you just start trial and erroring everything. You figure it out. You just, you just figure it out. Yeah. And you just let, you follow the feeling, essentially. You're just letting yourself uh, just experiment and try you know i mean there's no harm in just <laughs> experimenting yeah uh, but i feel like as you know as we get older um there is more of a hesitation to like pick up new things it's like oh well what if what if i'm not good at that or what if it's like a challenge to learn or what if i'm like a slow learner kind of thing it's like 
you didn't have those thoughts when you were a kid and you're more mentally like developed now yeah and to the point where it's detrimental uh you're you're doubting yourself but now nah, like that childlike curiosity is 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 still there it's just underneath like the con social conditioning yeah. so i'd say just like i mean obviously we got you know resources and stuff now to learn dolls and tutorials and but uh i would just say yeah just just to have fun with it just experiment I do like that. Yeah, you're a little bit, as an adult, a little bit more nervous to pick up something new. That was me with doing stand-up, dude. Like, you know, it, I was, I wanted to do it for so long, but I was just like, ah, I've been so focused on the music. I always said I was going to do it, and then I went and did it. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I have times. I fucking bombed last night, bro. Really? Bombed. <sighs> bombed. Yeah. My buddies came out, too, and they just watched me bomb. Just eat shit on stage, dude. It was a rough. <laughs> it's like, you know, I was explaining it to them. It's like I came too fast. I'm like, I swear this doesn't happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. usually funny, I promise. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like that, dude. And, yeah, I, I know um, I was talking to somebody. I was doing, like, a live stream, and someone had asked me. They were like, hey, I, I'm thinking about getting into music production. We have any tips? And I was like, just fucking do it, dude. Just, Just do it. Don't think about it. Oh man, I've been because uh, people come up to me all the time. Yeah, man, I've been thinking about doing this, doing that. You know, I've been mm -hmm. wanting to do this. Just fucking do it. What do you have to yeah. lose? You know what I mean? Just yeah. you know, try it out. I, give it a go. Just just feel it out. Yeah, give yeah. it a go. Yeah. Exactly. Hell yeah. It, it's not any. It's not really any more complicated than that. Yeah, right? just give it a go, bro. Have some fun. That's what I say. Get in there, have fun, have fun. If you're having fun, then you're gonna keep doing it. I think I think one of the main hangups because like. I've been lucky enough to not have to work like a nine to five job. I'm, I've, I'm like, luckily, and I'm very grateful for that. And I know that's not the case for, for a lot of people, for most people. It's like, how would you justify, okay, learning something new and experimenting and while, you know, having a, essentially like a time constraint. And I think that's kind of like, that's kind of the, 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 that's kind of like the, the tricky part it's like people don't have unlimited time to experiment i guess like that's when you have to start doing sacrifices dude yeah so like all right i can't go hang out with my buddies like that was me whenever i back home was getting into production dude i stopped hanging out with my friends i stopped yeah you know i stopped doing everything you know what i mean it was just literally school and production that's all i was doing and when i got out of school i was sitting in the studio after you know yeah. just that's it they just had to sacrifice it all but it's like, if you want it then fucking who gives a shit yeah, do it it's, you got to prioritize yeah yeah That's but i did want to bring up the school teaching dude because yeah. uh i know you do a lot of uh you do a lot of online tutorials i know you do a lot of classes and stuff like that that was something i even got into doing uh during the pandemic i taught probably like 150 different students like i went oh, i went great. hard on it i actually met some students last night for the first time that was cool they're like hey we actually took a lesson from you a couple oh, nice. like a year ago and i was like oh hell yeah did it help I'm like yeah i was like that's a cool f it was a different type of feeling like because i still have some I, have, I think i have three students that i still teach yeah i just just because like I like teaching them. They're fun. Yeah. And I've seen the progress from like, you know, almost two years now to where we're not sitting down working on production tips. They're sending me full project files. I'm like, all right, how can we make this better? But it's like full cohesive ideas right. starting from, hey, this is how you put a kick drum into Ableton to now they're like giving me these fully mix and mastered cohesive ideas. It's a fucking cool feeling. Dude. I mean, that's, that's huge. I, I have, I have quite a few things to say about that. Um, I want to say, firstly, um, I, I know what you mean, like being able to teach is like, particularly when you have good students that are receptive, mm -hmm. it's like, it feeds, it feeds you as well. It's very, a, very much of like a mutual thing. I find that when I teach and someone is receptive, I find myself like having a, an expanded perspective on the topic. And I think it helps me just as an artist and also as a teacher, like, I feel like I just understand things fundamentally better when I'm able to, when I teach them and they are received well. Yeah, it's cool when you have a student who's like fired up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like we're the ones that you can tell, like, oh, they really want to do this. Like they bout mm -hmm. this. The reason they're in this class today is to fucking. This is what they want to do. They're yeah. like taking it real serious. They send you something like the next week, and you're like, yo, this is dope. Yeah, yeah this is dope, dude. 
like I had, I had a lesson uh Things like a month cooking. ago where a student of mine he was showing me a project we're working on a project i'm like dude this he, he was showing me how he made one of these sounds and i was like fuck i didn't know how to do that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Teaching you. That's yeah thing, then, and then i went and i got out of we finished the lesson i wrote a song that day with that tip that he taught me you know what i'm saying i was just like that shit's cool man Point proven that's awesome yeah it's cool Oh, that's amazing. Dude, wait, how many how many students you said that you I probably taught like 150 different people during during lockdown. I went hard. That's crazy. Now some, most of them were one-offs, but I did have like those students who would do one every week. They were getting that unemployment check, so they were just like investing and in learning. So we would do a lesson every single week for like 6 months, you know, and like just hit it an hour a week. Do you So so okay, you an hour a week, but like like how often were you were you te- were like multiple students a day? I would oh, imagine. dude, I would, there would be some days where I'd have like five, six lessons. Wow, that's how I survived in the pandemic. You know what I mean? I mean, I was enjoying. I literally sat in this room from I do twelve hour days every single day in this room, Jeez. not even on lessons, just like producing, podcasting, writing, like you know, lessons. Yeah. It was just everything. I didn't leave. I was a fucking recluse, son. I had a good time in the pandemic. It was really good for me in a way, that's in a great. weird way. Like it, I grew a lot as a producers in person just everything mm-hmm. in general but uh dude i was a fucking recluse so yeah i'd have like five six four five six students in a day sometimes i just have like one you know early lesson whatever but mm. i taught I did, I did a bunch that's awesome man i i i like the idea of that and that's something that i i tried for a short time in the past maybe it's something that i needed to have you know give given it more time and kind of warmed up to it but like for me like i was saying like i was saying earlier like about you know, being, having introverted tendencies is like as much as, even if they're great people and great students and they're learning a lot, it's just like the social exposure, like me talking, if I'm talking to someone for more, like more than like two hours, like consistently, um, I start like disengaging. Like I start saying things and I'm not even really sure what i'm saying kind of kind of stuff and uh and i i just feel like kind of like strung out and tweaked it's like i'm i'm like i i i, I overdosed on socializing got you. <laughs> so so that's, like that's what happens to me is why i can't do that got you so like i'm on the opposite spectrum of that i could talk all fucking day you know that's what I mean? Great. Like I was definitely Lord bless me with that for sure but like so th- i haven't had to experience that like if you fucking if you want me to talk all day i'll do it you that's, know I'll yeah, keep it great. rolling. You know, we I'm need speaking. people like you. <laughs> we, dude, we need people like you, man, for real. You fucking just taught me so much. There's just videos and tutorials. Like, I can't tell you how many videos of you I've watched. I'm like, damn. You know <laughs> what I mean? Just like, I, I learned something today. Then it helped me yeah. out that day. You know, continued still using a lot of those tips you taught, you know? Well, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's mutual. I mean, yeah, we need each other. I need you. I need you too, brother. <laughs> So do you like doing the tutorial stuff more than like the lesson stuff just because you don't have yeah. to like talk to nobody? Yeah, yeah. And and I'm, it's kind of like bridging this gap between like – because it's not just tutorials. It's like I, I do like um, – like I like, te- I like to teach friends. Pretty much the people that I teach now is just like, you know, close homies. Like yeah. let's get on a call. Let's kick it. It's like there isn't that pressure for me to – for me to be the, the teacher the entire time. And uh, – and it's it's nice to just you know be able to teach but also just like you know kick it and just be a person um and that kind of that kind of helps with that so like between that and then there's also like making tutorials which is like okay i have a vision i have a, a, a an idea in mind and i i think i have a good way of of teaching it um and that usually is that usually comes from me exp- like I usually come up with the idea first. I'm like, hmm, I'll feel it. I'll feel something like, okay, how can I make this kind of sound using like only serum? And that's kind of been a thing that I've been doing for for several years now. It's like, okay, I feel I want to squeeze as much juice out of serum. I want to squeeze as much serum out of serum. You're gonna fucking nerd it out, dude. That's what you're gonna do on it. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna figure out a way to make this, even if I even if I break the thing or even if I'm doing it a way that it wasn't intended to be used. Um, and I've discovered a whole lot of shit just by doing that. And I think you can pretty much do that with like, with anything. Yeah. Like if you just spend enough time on one thing, you're going to be able to find ways like th- th- there's a creative, there's a creative limitation or like a, 
there's a yeah there's like a creative limitation um in things like when you when you just stick to just using one thing and you're gonna find new ways if you stick to it enough you're gonna find new ways of, of using it that you know are unconventional and that you wouldn't have thought of before and so anyway that's that's something that i've that i've been doing a lot particularly with serum and that is a, it's a really motivational thing to 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 um turn into like a tutorial or or like like a like a technique because it's it's very accessible and it's also there's a novelty factor about okay this crazy thing you can do this with just this one thing yeah you know what i mean there's something you're not thinking about check yeah. this out yeah yeah and every it's it's convenient that almost everybody has it it's like the sta it's like a staple plugin at this point so right dude have you seen that guy on twitter he, i think he's using phase plant yeah he's like making like helicopters and motorcycles yeah this is the most insane shit i know I know. I saw him on Twitter. He was. It was the. Um, it was the motorcycle one that. Yeah. That, like he really did a helicopter me. too. Really? Yeah, but it sounded just like a motorcycle, like the <laughs> motorcycle one. It did. It literally sounded like a. Like that was so impressive. I know. I'm like, dude. how the fuck did you just figure that out? It was so articulate. Like I was trying to like analyze the patch. And I was has, too, dude. It's so. He much has like twenty macro, like yeah. twenty mappings per macro, and so it's much like modulation, dude. <sighs> That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Yeah, that shit blew my mind. But like the lot, the amount. Of, I'm. I'm. Listen. No, we said we need each other. We need a guy like that because I'm not gonna sit in the studio and figure out how to make a motorcycle sound out of a fucking synth. I'm just gonna go <laughs> sample a motorcycle. You know what I mean? But he fucking did it, dude. That guy knows a synth like no other man. Like when I saw that, I was I was blown away because like the Me too. how long do you think it took to make that one patch? Like an hour and a half. It like maybe like a couple days. I don't I know. Think probably a couple days. Fuck, bro. I think a couple days. God. It was funny, dude. When I first saw that, I was like, "This is." I like, I, I laughed because I thought it was a joke. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, "Okay, here's a." He's just, he's just putting a sample of a motorcycle over the synth, and then you watch the patch, and I'm just like, "Wait, no, this is it's it's real. Like, yeah. it's doing all the things, and like the the custom LFO shapes, and it's like." It's beyond me. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, I could probably... I could see you doing some shit like that, though, dude. I could see you doing it. But, okay, it's... So, So I guess the reason why I... You don't see me do that sort of... Like, that's that's a different kind of... Nerd. That's a di yeah, yeah, well, it's a different... It's a different, like, category of, like, craziness. Yeah, of ner of just nerd. Like I, like I said, we're all fucking crazy the other day. We sit in front right. of a computer for 12 hours, you know what I mean? Like... It, it takes a it takes a nerd to do that for sure. You know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm more so like like sound design craziness. Yeah, and yeah. For me, it's like okay, well, I don't actually have a practical purpose to do that. You don't have the you don't have the, you don't have the fucking will. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like well, I I, yeah. I, I don't have the urge to go do, make a motorcycle. Right. Like okay, I do it, and then Twitter is like, wow, look at this, look at this crazy sound design nerd yeah like, now we're talking brilliant. about it on a podcast yeah well yeah <laughs> that's not that's not why i'm doing sound design and making music <laughs> right but like i mean to be able to do like it's the same kind of thing like doing something like that and just like he had a vision he's like all right i'm gonna do this because it's crazy and no one else has done it before and props to him and i'm sure that is one of the best ways to learn the synth oh i can imagine the amount of different shit you had to go do to figure that out yeah i mean it's just trial and trialing and erring like <laughs> everything it's like oh does this sound more like it no okay does so, this sound more like it? maybe he might know that synth better than anybody you know what i'm saying it's yeah. highly possible for sure better than me yeah, yeah. first that i don't know if i've ever used face plant so you've that a doubt better than me too i mean it's it's also like great for the for the the plugin company Killhearts too it's yeah. like wow you can do that you can do, <laughs> you can do this a realistic motorcycle with with our synth like yeah i wouldn't be surprised if like a movie hit him up and it's like hey can we get that sample from you yeah like yeah. Can you do sound design for this scene yeah. that's like perfectly spot on because i mean i mean you know fuck using samples to try to like synchronize up stuff in like i'm just thinking like the transformers movies it's like okay imagine I don't know how they do their sound. They used they used a uh, virtual riot preset in one of the uh, and they literally used really? a virtual riot preset. He put a post about it. It was in the Transformers. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I mean, crazy, right? One of the Transformers sounds was a fucking preset in Serum <laughs> that Virtual Riot made. That's hilarious. That's insane, right? <laughs> See, that's goals right there. Um, 
but but yeah the whole thing is like if you're able if you're able to do a, if you're able to make a sound with the synth you have full control over it just as you do full control over you know the 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 animation yeah versus just trying to find samples and piece together stuff that looks or sounds close enough to what you're seeing if you can just like synthesize it then you're golden but it also might be easier to just put a microphone by a motorcycle and say all right go you know like as, as we're saying and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but in I'm most still, cases in I'm most saying. in most cases but like like a virtual riot preset for transformers how are you gonna get that sound you know what i mean you gotta have a you, you have to have a transformer yourself no you're gonna you're gonna get it you're gonna buy a sample pack and you're gonna have the yeah. right you're gonna have the right to use that sample that's awesome it's crazy good for, good for him yeah it's good <laughs> for him it's good for him that was a fun that was a fun one all right, let's get some other one. Oh, yeah, I forgot there's more. Yeah, I got a couple. What's up, Taboo? This is Degaldi. What's up, Degaldi? Uh, I got a question for you and uh, Al5. I don't know how you say his name other than Al5, right? Oh, like, you'll take it. Hey. Dead Mouse thing or whatever. It's all is good, it? though. We love Not him. Not Dead Mouse. Right? Mm-hmm. That kid is from another world, man. <laughs> okay, so the question. When are y'all going to collab? And question for Taboo. Oh, I know. Yeah. When are y'all going to collab? And, uh, crap, I forgot my question. <laughs> oh, well. I guess when y'all, when y'all going to collab and, um, yeah, what, what's it like in a day in the life of uh, Al-5? Also, Taboo, fuck you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Would it be like A U Boo? Tay U five, you know? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something I gotta that. write it down. Yeah. Al Al A U Boo. A U Boo. A U Boo. A U Boo. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. We could make a song. It'd be a good time. We could. We, we could easy, yeah, we could easily make a song. I mean we're we're already here. We're in a studio. We're gonna get some crawfish out for this though. Mm. Yeah. Let's see how we feel after that. Yeah, we're going to get just some crawfish, man. He ain't had uh, some real Louisiana crawfish. We can get him some of that. Yeah, I thought I was, I was going to use that question because I wanted to figure out what how we'd combine the names, but I really just think we figured it out. A-U-Boo. Sounds like uh, some uh, Flintstones shit. Isn't that Flintstones? A-U-Boo-Boo. Is that Flintstones? Oh, um, the same animation team or the same same cartoon company it's i don't think it's the flintstones though. fuck who is it it's hey woo woo why does that sound familiar it is familiar bro i don't know my cartoons like i used to the only cartoons i watch nowadays is south park man i mean even that even that's like you know getting into vintage territory dude yeah they're like on their 25th season or some shit 26 <laughs> i think or maybe the 26 that's pretty wild they've been around since i've literally been bored yeah yeah that's crazy. How old are you? 29. 29. Yeah, they've been around since you were like three or something. Damn. Hey, dude, and they just got like a $900 million contract to basically have South Park for the next 10 years. Wait, wait, who did? South Park. Wait, Trey th- Parker and Matt Stone, they got a $900 million contract to do basically, I think like four movies, um, a couple more seasons, and then like an exclusive season on Paramount. That's... In, that's incredible to make the most Jeez. fucking insanely amazing oh my jokes God. like they, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like that's the whole that's the whole thing like i think the south park is a prime example it's just like it's just it's they're just doing what they want to do <laughs> dude they're just fucking goofballs and it's hilarious they're doing shit that they think it's funny yeah and then it just so happens everybody else thought it's funny and it just turns out to be this culture phenomenon yeah. where it's like they're able to talk about shit that's happening in the world that nobody else can really talk about because a it's cartoons b mm-hmm. they're children like they, that's kids <laughs> doing it but like they're able to talk about things that, that we we can't talk about as a society yeah. and it's great without it I, I don't know i feel like the world's a better place because of south park i completely agree i think it's 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 uh it's it's philosophical in a lot of ways and i think these are things like Kind of putting these suggestive and uncomfortable topics that are current events 
into this format, I think is uh, I, th- I think it's essential. That's think, comedy, as bro. A culture, we need yeah, comedy. That's comedy, that's man. Comedy. That's the only way that you can really talk about things. You know, bring it up and and, and make fun of it in a way. Like, hey, yeah. at the end of the day, we're all stupid. Yeah, we're all goofy. We're all people too. Like, what are, what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, man. I love that. I mean, imagine getting a nine hundred million dollar contract to make music for ten more years. And just whatever I want to do. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Goals. Yeah, I would just, <laughs> I would just, uh, I would just fuck off. Y'all wouldn't see me, dude. <laughs> hey, AU Five. This is Josh. I first seen you for my first time at Dance Festopia and your nice. uh, daytime set. That second one was fantastic. I was wondering if uh, he can give me a hint if y'all you're coming to Infra or not because that'd be sweet if you did thanks bye man so um, here's the thing about the show austin there's no rules okay you know any secrets you have you can kind of just tell them you know okay that's just you know cool yo, cool, yeah i mean i i i honestly don't even know what that is <laughs> he said in in front in sound yeah in sound it's a festival Infrasound. i mean not nothing is unfortunately nothing is nothing is booked for infrasound now. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, so I'm like, I'm gonna sit on this clip, <laughs> and they're gonna like, all right, we gotta fucking teach this guy, dude. We gotta teach him. Te- wait, 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 infrasound. I'm gonna send them this clip. And all right, we gotta book him so he knows. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be your agent for that one. Cool. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, where did we meet? What was that festival? Is in Cincinnati. That was called. Interstellar, Interstellar, yeah, 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 that's where we had met. Yeah, your set was awesome, dude. That was, I was really, thanks. Man. I was looking forward to seeing your set the most out of everybody because I've been a fan of your music for a long time. I've never seen you, and um, man, your set was fantastic. It was, I, I had a, I had a friend with me, and she even agreed. She was like, his set was awesome. Oh, was, uh, cause I was hyping her up the whole time because you had met her, but I was just like, and she was like, oh wait, he's a DJ. I'm like, yeah, we're about to go watch it, and I was like hyping her up. She really enjoyed the set too. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, it was it was Thanks, a good man. time, man. Was, and that after party was a good time. Yeah, yeah, dude. Okay, do you remember what that venue was called? Uh, yeah, that's the Thompson House. The Thompson House. Yeah, Newport, Kentucky. So creepy. Yeah. They're like, it's haunted. Oh, my God. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. What's that? <laughs> what's that dude, is a ghost going to beat me up? Dude, I'm a strong man. Dude, you're, you're a physical human. Yeah, dude. I'll kick that ghost's ass, and then I'll fuck their family. You know? <laughs> Bring it on, ghost. I ain't scared of y'all. Don't man. instigate this man. Yeah, dude. I'll fuck a ghost up, son. I ain't scared of him. <laughs> but, dude, no, that was crazy. Like, you, <laughs> you fucking brought it that night. I've never seen you. I've never seen you play either. Yeah. So that was the first. That was the first for me. And I was like in the middle of the crowd, just having a. I was feeling it, man. I love that. Going dude. In. I was talking shit and laughing. <laughs> yeah, I was talking shit. I was like, uh, yeah, we're over here in Newport, Kentucky. Y'all are over there in Cincinnati. I heard nothing. <laughs> Cincinnati's nothing but a bunch of fucking pussies. <laughs> I heard people in Newport, Kentucky, like to fuck. Am I right? Woo! And I start the show. <laughs> oh damn! Started talking shit, man. Getting yeah, you gotta get people revved up. <laughs> <laughs> I did that at uh, we well, I was on the balance tour and we uh we played San Fran in San Diego like night after night and uh, I got in San Diego. I was like, yo, we played in San Fran yesterday. There's nothing but a bunch of fucking pussies in San Francisco, and I just hear I'm like, yeah. <laughs> People love hearing that that they're that they're, they're less the, of a pussy than yes. <laughs> anyone else. Listen, dude, if you came if you came to New Orleans and you were like, "Yo, fuck the Atlanta Falcons," everyone would be like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah. It was funny, dude. I know. Uh, I think it was Hero Bust or uh, Twelfth Planet. No, it was Twelfth Planet. Uh, it was because he's a Rams fan, and the Rams had just beaten the Saints in the playoffs. And he gets up on stage and he said something about the Rams and you, he, dude, he had to recover because this is not the city to do that, man. Everybody, Ooh. boo! And I was even side stage, fuck you! Like, oh, was fuck, like that. It was dude. just a relentless amounts of booze, dude. Ooh. <laughs> 
big, big misstep on his end. Yeah, Jeez. dude. You got to talk shit. You're like, you got to talk shit. Like, if you're in a city and you talk shit about their rivals, they're going to love you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just go on stage tonight and be like, hey, I heard the Atlanta Falcons suck. <laughs> dude, they'll, they'll, they'll be ready for you, dude. They'll fucking, they'll give it everything they got. Like, we got to go hard for this guy. We, yeah. I, they're like, you know what? I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. This guy, I, I, can, I like him. We got to support his vision. Even if you don't like his music, we got to, you know, there's something about him. They're like, no, they're, they're a football team, buddy. They're a football team. <laughs> oh, we're talking about you. I thought you were, I thought you were saying, no, no, yeah, the Falcons' music isn't really that good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Falcons' music, they don't even know how to work a synth properly. I don't even, these guys are fucking chodes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying, like, even if they don't like my music, oh, right. saying that, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, oh, I'll, dude, I'll give, them, give them something. I feel like a lot of starting out, like, whether it's, like, uh, just starting a set, is just, like, letting them, like, trust is a big thing, right? Like, that's something yeah. I learned as a comedian, is gain their trust immediately. Right. You know right, what I mean? Because right. if they're unsure going into it, they're like, ah, we'll see. Then you're having to earn it. But yeah. if you get their trust right there, they're already invested. Solid foundation. Yeah. You can build up whatever you want. Exactly. So start out tonight, mm. but, like, I heard the Falcons suck. Am I right? Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you will be a god of them. They'll love you, man. They'll love you. Should I do it? Dude, you should win on, I'm telling you, man if you're here you should do it all right and if you want if you're playing in atlanta okay do it the same thing be like i heard the saints suck and yeah. i mean i hope, hope i'm not in the crowd you know <laughs> right, right but but i'm just saying the majority of people it's gonna dude especially in this a big big football town if you if you start your set out with the hey fuck the falcons am i right they're gonna be like yeah dude yeah <laughs> i'm ready to rage to this guy he hasn't even played me he hasn't even played a song this is the best set all night you know what i mean <laughs> Dude, that's some that's some wise advice. I'm gonna I'm gonna remind you tonight, dude, because yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna record it and then I'm gonna send it to all your Atlanta fans. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. But, but no, I won't record it. But I'm gonna remind you, like, hey man, it's not a good it's not a bad move. But do you, dude? Don't let me influence you. Well, I mean, <laughs> n- yeah, okay, for, I mean, for sure. For there sure. we go. Yeah, yeah do you, brother? I'm just it's saying. Definitely cooking now. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I gotta, I gotta think that over. I gotta sleep on that one. <laughs> on your nap. On my nap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, this has been great, man. Um. I can't thank you enough for coming to the studio today to do this episode, man. When I saw you're in town, I was like, hey, let's... let's had I mean, this is actually the last episode I'm doing in New Orleans. This is with you. So um, right thank on. you for uh, thank you for doing this. Totally, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, likewise. Dude. Yeah. So uh, anything you want to tell the people? Well, like, what's next? What you, and obviously, you're on tour right now, but anything else you got planned or anything you want the people to know? I mean, there's nothing really too much set in stone. Currently, I, um, I have... Uh, uh, Divinorum, which is the album that I released, um, my last album back in 2019, that is getting a vinyl release pretty s- vinyl release pretty soon, and um, there is also going to be a remix uh, album for that too. So that's going to be cool. Um, the rest of this tour is, uh, I hope, is going to be good. I mean, we got like 20 something more shows, um, and I mean, there's really nothing too much else that's like set in stone and. I kind of prefer it that way. Hell yeah. But. Well, dude, like I said, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do for the scene and the culture and stuff. Uh, I think the scene needs somebody like you, so thank you again. Thank and you. also, uh, thank you, everybody, listening to this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. I will see y'all in a month, hopefully. Um, take care of each other. Peace.